Well, hi, it's August 3, 2017. I had a big recital last night, uh, which was live streamed on Facebook. So thank you to uh, everybody who watched that. Um, that was a, a new thing for us and it got lots of views. And you know, one of the really great things was that my son who lives in Beijing was able to watch it live on his way to work in the subway in Beijing. I mean, it's just so remarkable. Anyway, um, back on the horse. Uh, I'm gonna uh, do some recording later on today. Uh, we're gonna use three uh, video cameras and uh, see, see if we can record at least one of the Schubert uh, song tr transcriptions that we did um, last night. So now I'm gonna warm up. And um, one of the nice things about doing these practice with commentary videos is that uh, I do the best kind of practicing. So. Uh, so if you're not here, sometimes I, I uh, work a little too hard or don't practice everything that I teach, but I'm going to do what I would tell somebody else to do, which is to start slowly and warm up by playing some beautiful notes. Uh, I want to think I've been... Uh, since there was the question in the Apprentice Cellist Club about um, continuous vibrato is uh, noticing whether mine is so as I'm playing and as I'm watching I gotta say that this watching is so helpful watching to see if I do that. I seem to have gotten into uh, G minor. Now somebody was asking me at the concert, you're like, what do you do with your thumb when you come into uh, thumb position? is when you're in thumb position you know what's the relationship between your third finger and your thumb and um, if you're new to thumb position you might not know or even want to hear that that's the thing but but it's a perfect fourth on one string or an octave when you're on two strings so a default spacing of your fingers is is really good. Okay, I'm gonna noodle a while and maybe not talk so much. Uh, So what I'm working on here, I guess I'm going to talk more than I thought, um, is uh, uh, when I'm vibrating with my fourth finger that I'm not curling up or I'm not really having my third finger on the A string, but I have these fingers over the D string or even, even further.
Uh, Mr. Starker, when I observed him teach, I th there was uh, a thing that he talked about uh, a, a lot. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was like not walking a tightrope, not being on uh, just one string at a time, but thinking of being in the double stop positions. I'll, I'll look into that a little bit more. As I've said, I've got to fix this screen a little bit. Um, I didn't study with uh, Janos Starker. I did uh, have the opportunity to observe him teach for an entire semester uh, seven years ago when I was on a sabbatical. And, or six years, something like that. Um, I uh, uh, did get to study with one of his students uh, uh, when I was a teenager. So uh, he's always been a great inspiration uh, to me. So anyway, that working on the vibrato today, and the continuous, So glad that there are some videos uh, that are showing up about Alexander technique. Uh, my personal trainer guy is really after me about slumping and keeping my shoulders back, and it helps my cello slurping your way to success with one finger scale. So I'm, I'm gonna do actual scale uh, with one finger and um, uh, I like. If I was hunching my shoulders a little bit as I come up here. So the thing I want to do is to kind of keep them back uh, and have a good posture without accidentally hunching. And that's something we have to... There we go. Uh, I need to watch. There's increasingly good posture. who was Leonard Rose's assistant and the year that I had the privilege of studying uh, with Mr. Rose and Mr. Robbins, he was very big on uh, using one finger scales for vibrato and the idea being that you would get comfortable and then keep transferring that up. Uh, I'm gonna switch to third finger, a little less easy than that I'm pressing down a little bit, my fourth finger's uh, curling a little bit. Seems to be a reaction to just having the arm weight on there and there's a little muscular uh, pressure, so I'm gonna kinda watch that. Um, uh, so, uh, let's see, I haven't done first finger, so I'm going to stay in the G major bar. 
Well, that reminds me of being in G major and vibrating all over the place with the swan. So I think I'll play that, and then I'll be able to work on the um, Lee easy, so-called easy etudes that I'm going to make some recordings of uh, once I've warmed up. So it's I gotta say, um, no matter how experienced you are, um, everything has to be maintained. Same, you know, I worked out a lot. And lost a lot of weight, you know, five or ten years ago. I stopped working out, start, stopped uh, uh, being really intentionally healthy about my diet, and I gained a lot of weight and got out of shape. Um, if I don't practice a lot, if anybody didn't practice a lot, um, their playing deteriorates. And a lot of us, I was talking with somebody last night, uh, you know, find that as we get older, um, uh, we have to keep practicing. Our, our bodies change. Um, and so to maintain things and kind of rediscover how to play with our bodies as they have evolved is, is really important. Um, unfortunately, it's just like you can't get to a certain level of skill and then stop practicing. If only that was the case. Um, and I remember Bernard Greenhouse, the year that I had the privilege of studying with him, talked very much about this. He was just turning 70 that year. Um, and he was talking about how he had ad adapted his vibrato and, you know, he had to really, uh, he was still performing a lot. He had to, to practice and, and really pay attention to the mechanics. Anyway, the swan. that I learned that semester that I was watching Mr. Starker teach you often advocated doing a ascending shift uh, going from a higher finger to a lower finger so I've gotten in the habit of doing that and often often helps
no matter how many times I play that, it is so lovely. I played that on the very first recital that I ever gave when I was 15 years old and my mom, uh, and if you follow me on Facebook, uh, you know I post stories about my mom who now has uh, a very uh, advanced dementia, Alzheimer's disease, and, and she was a wonderful pianist and a piano professor for many years at University of Tampa and uh, she accompanied me on that. And at the twilight of her ability to play, when she was already uh, living in an assisted living uh, memory care unit, um, we had her, her seven foot Steinway piano there and, and long after she could have a rational conversation with me, um, we would play pieces together and one of the ones that she just loved to play and one of the last ones that she could play was the swan. Something happened in her brain where, where over the period of a few weeks she began to not be able to play, to do uh, chromatic alterations, you know, chromatic harmonies, um, she, not be able to modulate and within a month or a little more than that, she could only play in G major. So this piece was probably the last piece that we, we got to play together. And it was the first piece, or among the first pieces that we uh, performed together. Um, there's one passage, you know, uh, uh, as I think back to that, I, uh, that recital happened when I was 15 and I just turned 59. So what is that, 44 years ago? Um, so here's the thing, when uh, this part, I want to, there, I messed that up again, <laughs> again just now, and, and for 44 years, I get worried every time I play that passage, and um, um, I haven't, you know, worked it out and practiced it lately, but um, these things happen. Uh, I did, uh, when I played this, before the kind of uh, most conventional fingering of coming down to four, that is tricky. Uh, I don't know if there still is a tape of that recital. I, I'm not sure which shift it was in this passage that I messed up. Or, uh, maybe it, that was that one. Now, I avoided the, sh the one to four issue because that is really tricky just now by playing a harmonic. Um, if you happen to be working on this piece, uh, it's often a lot easier to slide down on three. And And sometimes I like to come up to three there. And then using the harmonic, you can come back to two. Or even not use the harmonic. that piece and I don't always think about my mom when I uh, play it but it was nice to think about it today. Well, anyway now I'm warmed up um, so I'll put this in the, my YouTube uh, practice uh, vlog um, category and uh, now I will make some videos of some more Lee etudes. See ya!